Many long winters ago, as the snow began to fly, the year had been a good one. The corn was tall, the crops were plentiful for some villages. But other villages, maybe there was too much rain in the spring or too little in the summer. And they had not put away enough food for the coming snows. And so when the moon was full, this young woman, she decided to share some of their bounty with a neighboring village where her sister lived. With a long stick across her shoulders and a heavy basket from each end of the stick filled with beans and corn and squash. With her baby on a cradle board on her back, she and her husband began to travel the long walk to her sister's village, Hope. And as they were walking along, her husband was keeping watch. Her husband, who had no burden, he was the one who was complaining. Hope. I'm tired. I'm hungry. When are we going to stop and rest? Hope. She said, it's just a little further to my sister's village, please. I would like to get there before the sun sets. Hope? Ah, I'm going maybe. I can't go anymore. Well, they got to the top of the hill. And she said, I think it's the next valley. Just a little further, please. Hope? He said, I will cross one more valley. I will climb one more hill. And then I am done. They crossed that valley, and when they got to the next hill, they looked and they did not see her sister's village. But down in the valley was a small wickiup, an old-style home. Now the Iroquois, they live in longhouses, like an apartment building where several families share a house together. But this wigwam, it was a much older-style home. But the young man, he said, I'm stopping there. You can go on if you like, but I am tired. Ho. As they tumbled down the hill, she tried to persuade him. Please, I know it's just a little further. Wouldn't you rather stay in the warmth of my sister's lodge? They'll be so happy to see us. You can go on if you like, but I'm stopping. Hope. When they got to the bottom of the hill, they saw this wigwam, and it had a a deerskin door, a flap. They opened the flap, and in the moonlight in the back, they could barely make out in the darkness was a long, thin wooden box. And on one side of the lodge was a sleeping rack. And on the other side of the lodge was a pile of furs. Ho! The husband said, I am going to sleep here on this sleeping rack so I am close to the door and I can keep watch. You and our child, you can sleep in the pile of furs. Make yourself a bed. She didn't want to. Have you ever had that feeling Maybe a little voice in the back of your head that says, "Eh -eh." (laughs) uh-uh. How many of you heard that voice? How many of you listened to that voice? (laughs) One last time, she said, please, something is not right here. Let us go. (laughs) But he had already begun to snore. Hope? She set down her burdens. She took the baby from the cradle board. She began to nurse her child as she unbraided her hair. When the baby's belly was full, she burped the baby and spread out the furs and crawled into sleep. But as she was laying there, hope, she heard a sound like Husband, husband, what is that sound? Did you hear that? (laughs) But he only snored. She heard a sound like clickety-clack. Clickety-clack. Husband, husband, did you hear that sound? (laughs) But he only snored. And then she heard a sound that sounded like like a fox tearing the throat of a rabbit. Husband, husband, did you hear that sound? He did not even snore. 
Hope? Just then, moonlight came down through the smoke hole. Clickety clack, clear! She crawled across the floor of the wigwam. She put her hand on her husband's chest to wake him up. She was going to leave. She did not care what he thought. But when she put her hand on her husband's chest, she felt something warm and wet. Husband, it is just my imagination. Hope. She wanted to flee. She wanted to get out of there. But her baby was asleep in the bundle of furs. So more to comfort herself, she said, Husband, husband, you continue to sleep. I am going back to my baby. And she crawled across the floor. As soon as she had her child safely in her arms. As she ran out of that lodge, she burst through the door. And as she ran, hope. Behind her, she heard, <laughs> clickety-clack, clickety-clack, ho. Oh. She ran a little faster, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, ho. Oh. She ran even faster, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, ho. Oh. She turned and she saw a vampire skeleton, its fangs red with blood. <laughs> She ran as fast as she could, but her long hair, unbraided, began to snag in the branches, and it was getting closer and closer. Ho! 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 Just as it was reaching out its long, bony fingers and grabbing her hair, she tripped. She tripped over a log. She tucked her baby in, and you know in that moment, you think so fast, almost without thinking. She did everything to protect her child. As she tucked her child in, she rolled. And when she sat up, she was in the firelight of her sister's village. Ho! Oh? Imagine you are in this village. Where has this woman come from? <laughs> in the edge of the firelight, they saw the skeleton disappear. Into the darkness, they turned back. Her sister recognized her. Ho! Oh. And she told the people the story that I just told you. An old woman stood up. She said, when I was a little girl, I knew that man there in that lodge. He had a twisted mind. And so, when he died, we did not set his body on a funeral pyre. We did not burn his corpse and release his spirit. It was trapped there in that lodge. Ho! Oh. But now that someone has opened the flap, now that it is feasted, we must do something else. Ho! Oh. And then she turned to the people and she asked them the question that I ask you right now. Are any of you brave enough? The young woman stood up. She said, that was my husband. I will go with you. And her sister stood beside her. He was my brother-in-law. I will go with you. Several young men rose and they made their plans. The next morning... In the sunlight, they would feel stronger. On their way to that lodge, they gathered baskets of twigs and sticks and logs, firewood. When they arrived, they looked inside. They saw the wooden box was open and floating in a pool of blood was the vampire skeleton. The old woman closed the lodge. Old friend, you may not remember me. I was a little girl when last I saw you. But we have come to tend to your lodge. Ho! Oh. And when she gave the signal, instead of raking and cleaning up around the lodge, they began to pile first leaves and twigs and sticks and logs. Old man, do not worry. We are here to burn away the brush. Ho! Oh. 
And when she gave the signal, they rubbed two sticks together and they started small fires. Soon the fire completely encircled the lodge. Inside, boom, they heard something hit against the wall. Boom, something hit the other wall. Boom, it hit the back. Crash! It burst out. They swung their clubs. They fired away, but it had transformed itself. It had become a snowy owl. Ho! Oh. And it flew off into the forest. Ho! Oh. And they say that still to this day, the snowy owl is the ghost of those who have gone on before us. Ho! Oh. And they say that still to this day, whenever a young man and a young woman are walking alone in the forest, ho! Oh. And he is being disrespectful to her. All she has to do is tell him this story. <laughs> and what happened to the other young man who would not listen to his wife? Hope? Yes. And that is how that story goes. Thank you. <laughs>